What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Today, again, we are going through the Glassnode Insights newsletter, week 30. Before we get into that, I wanna kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already. While you're down there, be sure to turn on the post notifications so you know when the next video is coming up. Also, down below in the description is the link, it's right at the top, uh, to my library channel, all right? I highly suggest that you start getting used to following things on library. Um, get involved over there. As there is more uh, censorship in YouTube, this is gonna be one of the places we're gonna lean on, all right? It's already been, uh, uh, a lot of content is over there. Go support, thank you. You can even earn if you wanna, you have LBC tokens and you wanna, uh, support them on my channel or onto my uh, certain videos it's easy you can all they're your tokens always your your coins you can always get them back you can revoke it but during that time anything I earn you're gonna earn a piece of that okay so go look into that it's gonna be good for you also uh, leave a comment thumbs up thumbs down my only request is that you please be civil in your discourse kindness and compassion are absolutely free let's use it make the world the place we want to see now let's get into it thank you thank you for listening to that all right week 30 on chain 2021 the bitcoin market has experienced a strong rally off the back of a short squeeze returning many coin holders to profitability all right bitcoin market has experienced a strong breakout this week Trading from the consolidation lows of 29,479 to a high of 35,423 on Sunday. While technically an event for next week's newsletter at the time of writing, Bitcoin's price was rallying off the back of what appears to be a short squeeze, reaching a high of 38,677 early Monday morning. And now, even as the time I'm recording this, we've seen it get as high as 40,000. All right. This week, we will review both of the derivatives and on-chain market data to assess the lead into this, into this short squeeze and establish a basis for the profitability of the market. As investors return to profitability, it asks the question as to whether or not they will begin spending those coins into market strength if conviction hold, hold remains or it has waned. You can see here, as things have been going by, like through this whole range, it's been like, wah, 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 getting smaller and smaller and then pow. All right. Shorts squeezed higher. With the growth and maturing of derivative markets, the interplay between spot and leveraged markets creates new dynamics in this market cycle that were not present in the past. As we open the week, open interest in the options market suggests that volatility was expected. Open interest by strike price once uh, one month out from to uh, the 27th of August contracts shows a notable preference for strikes well outside the current consolidation range. The strike price with most open interest for the 27th of August on Deribit are 25,000 for puts with 1,388 BTC in open interest and 80K for calls with 1,513 BTC in open interest, okay? So you can see there's more looking for a high than there is looking for a low, but not by a whole lot, okay? So as we can see in this nice little graph. All right. Open interest in perpetual futures markets has remained largely flat over the past two months, ranging between 10 billion and 12 billion since May. Over the last week, however, perpetual futures open interest climbed by a notable 1.4 billion alongside the rally in price. Oftentimes, elevated open interest starts to increase probabilities of a volatile leverage squeeze occurring. And there we see it. It was up, 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 drop in May when the rest of the prices drop, go really flat a little bit, flat, 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 and here we go. Starting to show some interest again. If we assess the volume derived from cash margins collateral, we can see a structural uptrend has been in place since early May. Cash margin collateral are those futures uh, positions that leverage cash or cash equivalent stablecoins based collateral. In general, cash margin positions are preferable for market stability as they remove a layer of risk that is present when volatile crypto margin futures dominate. And look at that. 
cash back. Confirming this trend, we can see the relative dominance of crypto margin futures positions has been in structural decline over the same period, falling from 70% down to 52.5%. While leverage in all forms is known to exasper exacerbate market volatility, these two charts show a clear decline in traders taking on risk on, uh, risk on crypto margin positions, which is a net positive trend for the market. It also adds weight to the risk off nature of the current market structure. There we go. This is visual representations of what I just read there. To assess the directional bias of futures markets, we can see that perpetual funding rates have continued to trade negative. This indicates the net bias remains short Bitcoin. This metric in particular helps us identify that Monday's price rally is likely associated with an overall short squeeze with funding rates continuing to trade at even more negative levels despite uh, price rallying up 30%. Indeed, during Monday's rally, almost 120 million in shorts were liquidated in an hour, which largely confirms that a short squeeze as primary driving force. Look at that. All in one shot. On-chain activity remains quiet. In direct contrast to the volatility in spot and derivatives markets, the transaction volume and on-chain activity remains extremely quiet. On a 14-day uh, median basis, the entity adjusted transaction volume, so that's I believe for like bigger institutions, uh, for Bitcoin remains depressed around 5 billion per day. This remains a significant decline from the 16 billion per day prior to the May sell-off. However, volume has not yet collapsed to the same extent as the, as the 2017 blow-off top, where network volume saw a full retrace, a subsequent bear market, and eventually a lengthy capitulation. It remains to be seen whether on-chain volumes start to pick up in response to recent volatile price action. We will see, because it did take some time, you know. You know, from there, it came up a little re, re, uh, little small rally and then drop, try again and drop, okay? So what we've seen so far is similar to maybe, you know, this, but it's pretty far off. Despite on-chain transaction volumes falling, when compared to the network valuation market cap in the NBT ratio, we can see an interesting fractal. Historically, very low values of MDT suggest the network is undervalued relative to the amount of transaction volume. Conversely, higher, value, higher values as seen back in February 2021 indicate transaction volumes are relatively low and may not justify the current market valuation. As prices traded down to the lows of 29,000 at the start of the week, the EA NVT suggests that Bitcoin network was relatively oversold compared to on-chain settlement volumes. This short squeeze has now pushed the EA NVT higher. If on-chain volumes do not rise in support of these elevated prices, it may suggest the rally lacks fundamental drivers and would be a sign for caution. Note both the on-chain volume and the NVT charts are shown as entity adjusted. This filters for only economically meaningful transactions by removing the self-spend, wallet management, and other internal affairs. Yes, so entity adjusted, that's what that means because they you know, they can just be moving things within uh, wallets of their own. It'd be like if I had 10 wallets and I was just moving stuff around, that's not really showing transactional data except for what contributes to uh, minor fees. On the topic of entities, we can see a more constructive spike in receiving entities, those taking custody of coins, while sending entities, those spending coins, remains relatively flat. This is an early trend change and one that would indicate a more positive accumulation type environment if it persists. It highlights that of the volume that is transacting, a reasonable portion looks to be accumulation and relatively little is uh, entities exiting the network. Overall, on-chain activity remains somewhat bearish and continues to be quiet. Perhaps the utilization of the Bitcoin network is lagging prices in this case. 
Ideally, renewed volatility and constructive price action sparks back demand for block space. If not, it may suggest a more cautious framework is necessary in the weeks ahead. Network profitability. To close out the analysis for the week, we will uh, assess the aggregate market profitability relative to the realized price. The realized price is one of the principal metrics underlying on-chain analysis. On an on-chain analysis. It is calculated by valuing all coins at the price when they were last moved, and thus represents the aggregate cost basis for the circulating coin supply. The realized price is currently trading at 19,300, generally coincident with the last uh, cycle's all-time high back in 2017, that's referring to. With this week's closing price of 35,400, it means the aggregate market current holds an unrealized profit of around 83%. In the context of past market cycles, we can use the MVRT ratio to compare the market cap spot valuation to the realized cap on-chain cost basis. Here we see that the MVRV ratio is trading in a zone that is historically reached in three circumstances. Early bull, bleh, early bull cycle 3x, where prices have macro bottomed and smart money accumulators have returned to an appreciable profit level. Mid bear cycle 2x, where investors have seen their unrealized profits dramatically slash down in a cycle top, but before the ultimate capitulation, and a double pump 1x in the 2013 market, where the mid-cycle shakeout put enough investors offside before swiftly reverting into a powerful blow off top. At this stage, it remains to be seen whether the market can turn into or turn the macro trend around and confirm a resumption of the bull market. If so, it would resemble the 2013 double pump market, if not the probability of being a mild, uh, sorry, a mid bear fractal may increase. If not, the probability of being a mid bear fractal may increase. There we go. So let's take a look at this for a moment. So 2012, you had this early bull pump you know, to a little over a thousand dollars, drops all the way, you know, is that right? Drops all the way to 40 cents, 30 cents, then goes right back up to make new highs somewhere around like 3,000. Then you have your mid there, you know, and, and full off capitulation, starting things off. This one, it, early bull, mid bear, okay, interesting, okay, looking at the MVRV for the short term holders, STH cohort, we can see that they are currently holding coins at a significant unrealized loss. The STH MVRV rarely trades at such oversold conditions with almost all historical instances being followed by significant price rallies. That said, these facts fractals typically only occur in bear markets, noting that this includes the final capitulation event which starts a macro bull. All right. <clears throat> we can also investigate the volume of supply that has returned to profitability during the short squeeze. This provides us with an estimate of coin volume that has on-chain cost bases in the 29,000 to 38,000 consolidation range from the weekly low of 29,000 to the short squeeze high of 38,400 at the time of writing. Over 2.1 million BTC has returned to profitability. This represents a volume equivalent of 11.2% of the circulating supply. Finally, we review whether there are any signs of older profitable coins being spent on chain to take advantage of market strength for exit liquidity. What would be uh, relatively bearish to see a significant increase in older coins, which were older than a year, spending during this relief rally, as was seen in 2018 after the blow off top. So far, we have not seen such behavior. If general dormancy of older coins persists, it would suggest conviction to HODL remains relatively strong and favor a more constructive view on market structure moving forward. Conversely, the spending of older coins in mass would indicate a flush of the liquid coins are returning to liquid supply and a more bearish outlook ahead.
there we have it. Uh, pretty much, um, we're still in a kind of a, a wait and see kind of pattern. Uh, as I look at things, you know, definitely nothing has really confirmed. We stopped, you know, price wise right on a previous resistance level that occurred uh, like a, maybe a month and a half ago. Um, so we shall wait and see. Be smart out there, you know, make a plan. If you're entering and playing in this market, follow that plan. Apply uh, uh, risk management along the way, and you will learn exactly what you need to know to manage yourself in this type of environment. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I love you all. Peace.